it, it, it looked bassy. There's one. I knew it. I knew it. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Bring it in, baby. Bring it in. Over the last decade, I've caught fish in every corner of North America, from California to Mexico, Florida to New York, and all the way up to Canada, documenting it all on video for you guys. Yes, I got it! But as a video creator and instructor, I have generally left out one of the most important and the largest demographics in the world of fishing, and that is the bank beater, the pond prowler, the shore master. Yeah! In this series, I'm making it my goal to fish more bodies of water than I ever have before, but this time from the bank. My name's Tyler, and this is 100 Ponds. Well, what is going on everybody, and welcome back to the 100 Ponds series. Here on my channel, I love teaching you guys how to become better bass anglers, but I also love the challenge side of things. I love challenging my, my fishing skills and knowledge everywhere I go across the country, and that is the point of this 100 Ponds series. However long it's gonna take me, I'm gonna fish 100 ponds, get every single one on camera for you guys with drone footage of every pond to make sure we are doing the best job we can to teach you guys how to catch bass in ponds, like I said, no matter where you live, anywhere in the country. Today I am in Southeast Tennessee, North East Tennessee, East Tennessee with a subscriber, Emerson, right over there. Big old football player. That kid says he's 15 years old. Yep. Don't believe him, but he says he is. But uh, we're here at his grandpa's pond, and uh, I think this is pond Pond number eight, maybe. If not, it'll be on the screen. Let's get into it. Now, if you guys have missed the previous videos uh, in the pond series, of course, I'll have the, the two previous ones, number one and two, linked down below. And of course, we're gonna film several different ponds in this video to try to knock out as many as we can, as quickly as we can in this series. Now, before I ever make a cast, I'll tell you guys exactly what conditions we are faced with today. That way, if you guys have similar conditions, you know exactly what to throw for your body of water. Uh, we have mostly cloudy, you know, sun's popping out here and there, here in East Tennessee. It is early summer, which means the water temperature should be in that, you know, low 70s, mid 70s range. It would be hotter if we had not had overcast and rain for basically the last like five days in a row. And so that is why I think these fish are gonna be a little bit more shallow because I see this pond here is up maybe about five or six inches from its normal pool. And I see tons of activity along the bank which clues me in that there's probably fish that want to bite a reaction bait here. And so that is going to dictate which lures that I throw, especially with a little bit of wind, a little bit of ripple we have on the, on the top of the water, I'm really going to lean into my vibrating jig because it's my favorite one for this clarity of water. I say we have a foot and a half, maybe two foot water visibility. The main forage in here, Emerson told me, oh, he's got one. <laughs> bait fish and bluegill with a little bit of crawfish. They do have a, a decent amount of this algae snot grass in here, so that is going to cause a little bit of trouble for the vibrating jig, but not gonna be too difficult. Air temperature, like I said, maybe 78, 82 degrees outside, really, really nice day, and I'm just excited to get to fishing. So, as I've talked about before, some of my pond videos, I'm really gonna cover water as fast as I can. You know, if he just caught one, in and around the snot grass. As much as I would like to just make a cast out in the middle to avoid it, I'm going to weave my vibrating jig. Oh, ah, got some on there. Weave it in and out of this grass because this is really the only structure I see in the water is this stuff here. Ugh, yuck. That right there is a problem. Now, if you guys are curious how to, you know, effectively catch fish in and around this, what I call snot grass, snot moss, whatever it is for you. I have made a video on that where I talked about the best tactics and lures for that. But since he already caught one on the vibrating jig, oh, and I've got one. Look at that, look, look at that, let's go, let's go, yes! I'm not gonna switch lures, because it's working. <laughs> so I'm just gonna deal with the snot grass. And that right there makes this pond a success. You guys know that in order for a pond to be a success in this 100 pond series, all I've gotta do is catch one fish, but because I think this one's gonna be a little bit easier and a little bit more fun, we're gonna keep catching them. Thank you, buddy. You know what, I feel like the lighter the vibrating jig, the better. I've got a pretty heavy one on here right now. All my tackles up there at the truck, I don't really feel like going back to re-rig, but it would be more, more effective, I think, if I had like a quarter ounce or three eighths ounce instead of a five eighths ounce. This just falls a little bit too fast, and I've already had one fish 
a minute ago follow my lure all the way to the bank and I just couldn't slow it down enough for that fish to eat it. So I definitely think if you're in this situation where you have this kind of snot grass, it's also gonna be easier to keep it out of the, uh, the snot with a lighter vibrating jig and lighter lures in general. Just work in the bank extra fast. This is a, like I said, a classic example of a pond that doesn't really have any contours or visible cover besides the snot grass. Pretty dang shallow. Gotta work your lures faster to keep them up near the surface of the water or else they're gonna grab that stuff. It is so snotty. This is definitely the wrong lure weight. The right lure, the wrong weight. Now I think with this water clarity being, you know, like I said, two feet, it's, it's relatively clear. A swimming worm would definitely work in this situation and would allow me to keep it out of that snot grass. But I'm crunched for time today on this pond. We got to move on to the next one. I always want to cast around fountains. It's usually slightly deeper there and attracts fish with the moving water. It's interesting, the farther I've walked down this bank, the less and less bites and follows I've gotten, which means that the fish are like the book says they should, being moved that way because of the wind. So the wind, of course, like you can see here, is, is non-existent on this side, but of course it's much more windy on that side of the pond, and wind blows basically the entire ecosystem into one side. So it blows all the phytoplanktons and the zooplankton, which then draw the bait fish, which then draw the game fish. And so that is why I caught one over there, had a follow over there, and he caught two over there. And so I'm just gonna continue to make a few more casts on this end, because I do see some overhanging trees in the water, some good visible structure that's worth hitting. But it keeps getting shallower the farther this way I go, and I see less and less surface activity. So we're just gonna, uh, yeah, lots of snot too. Just gonna fish these little targets here and then head back down. Emerson just caught another one where that grass starts and where the wind is. So we're heading down. Ponds like this are all about finding certain areas that have fish and then fishing those areas slower. So now I know what to do. And so do you. Whoop to do. Oh, no, oh, oh, I lost him. Dang it. What I need to do is get a wacky worm or a weightless a weightless uh, caffeine shad and fish it around this stuff here because these fish are obviously willing to eat it shallow and with how fast I'm having to reel this there's definitely a few that I'm leaving behind that are not in a full chasing mood gosh there's one bring it in here yes prove my point proved my point find a location where you got a bite and either slow down there or just pick that area apart. So as you all are going to be able to see from these next few casts here, I'm not making very long ones because every single one of my bites has come right next to these shoreline grass clumps. So just working back and forth down this area, making really short, efficient casts. That's the thing. I've told you guys before, find fish in an area, slow down. If I wasn't crunched for time, I would totally go get a weightless soft plastic. But for now, we're just going to keep picking this apart. There's one. Ah, get in here. Yes. <laughs> Chill, buddy. Yeehaw. Thank you, friend, for proving my point. And with that, we're going to move on to pond number nine. Of course, I want to explore as many ponds where I'm from in Texas as I can in this series, but I travel all across the country fishing for myself and filming for the Bass Pro Tour, and so I have so many cool opportunities to fish ponds that I would never have the opportunity to if I wasn't traveling for this job. So I'm excited. We are here at my summer house up here in Michigan, and this pond here I've been to before. I think it was like four years ago. I don't think there are many bass in here, but there were a few, and they needed the wacky rig. And so I purposefully got out here 
as early in the morning as I could. The sun rose about half an hour ago, and so I got myself a little popper. We'll go over the uh, the conditions here in a second, but before I, I go to the finesse situation, which I feel like these fish are going to need, I know that as I as I walk the bank here, there's bluegill I see, tiny little minnows, and like I said, there weren't that many fish in here, and they needed that wacky rig to bite. Let's stick the camera down here and uh, take a walk at the bank. Probably hard for you guys to see at this point in the day because the sun is not quite up yet, but we have pretty dang clear water. I'd say four to five of visibility. We have some shoreline grass here. Doesn't really make it froggable, so I can't really throw a topwater frog. That's why I have a little mini Strike King topwater popper. So we're gonna walk the bank real quick. Again, it is not a very big pond here. Uh, does not have a huge population of fish, but the ones that I caught were nice fish. Now, as I take my first cast with the mini little topwater popper on my spinning rod, uh, let's go over some of the more current conditions. It is summertime when I'm fishing this pond right now. Uh, water temperature in here has to be up here in Michigan in the upper 70s at this point. Fish, of course, totally postponed. They're eating in their summertime patterns, and that's why, especially in the summer, I don't care where you are, as a pond angler, you just you have to get out here early. There's almost no substitute to, to have the most success possible than getting out to your ponds early in the morning. That's just gonna be when the fish are most active. And again, I have no clue if the popper's gonna work, but we can hope. You know, I'd like to catch one on top water if I can. It's not always possible. Sometimes fish are just not top water eaters, and I have a feeling in this pond they are not. And you can't find that out in your local pond without trying. Oh, okay, you know what? I'm so wrong. <laughs> That's hilarious. I literally had to let my popper sit there and the fish came and ate it. Holy cow, that's crazy. Bring it in. This guy choked it. This guy choked it. Okay, I guess they are top water eaters. I just had to be a little more patient. And that right there is fish number one. Beautiful little popper eater bass. Again, I went with the small popper because I knew these fish were, were you know, needing a finesse presentation. And then I went with the spinning rod because that's what it takes to throw the small popper. But that right there beautiful little Michigan largemouth. So thank you, buddy, for biting and showing that you will bite top water. But he ate it when it was like sitting still. As, as you guys heard me just say, ironically, didn't think they were gonna eat top water in here, but they needed it still. So I'm gonna work this thing extra slow. But hey, we got success. Juicy little cast right here to the corner. This whole pond is relatively deep. It slopes up pretty quick from deep water to shallow. And like I said, that's where that grassy edge is. And I got that first fish on a little piece of grass sticking out on the edge. I'm guessing that's where these fish are gonna be sitting right now. In the morning time, now as soon as that sun gets up, they're all gonna push into the deep middle hole of this pond. But this little popper, just very, very calm. It's not invasive, it's not in their face, it's just a little blooper, you know? Just a little, little popper. And I will oftentimes go with a clear popper in these clear water situations because it imitates what most of them feed on, which is little tiny minnows. And I wanna get as close as I can to what they're eating. Oh, gosh dang it, I missed one. He's right where he should be though. Right where he should be, totally missed him. I'm throwing this popper on 10 pound fluorocarbon as a leader, which is usually not, rec not recommended for top water, but with a tiny pop water, tiny topper, to goodness, but with a tiny popper, you can get away with a tiny fluorocarbon leader. I, was, I had this thing rigged up and ready for a wacky rig, and I didn't really feel like changing it. Oh gosh, there's one, there's one, yes! Got him, got him. Bring it in here. I gotta go, I gotta go to him. I got light line here on my popper. Got light line here on my popper. Bring it in, bring it in. Yes, ha ha ha. Yeehaw. Man, this guy trucked it. Beautiful Michigan largemouth right there. Check that fish out, y'all. That is cool. These fish in here are definitely healthy, but I had to work that thing so dang slow to get that bite. 
Usually I like to pop a, a popper a little bit faster, get some walking action to it. Cannot do that with this situation. These fish need it a little bit slower. They're a little more finicky, but beautiful Michigan largemouth. You are bleeding for some reason. We will get you back in the water. Had to chunk them a little bit, but we are finding success. Like I said, I could totally throw a drop shot or a wacky ray out here and catch fish, but we're gonna save that for pond number 10, I believe. Because while the sun is low, we're gonna keep throwing that top water. Now what I'm targeting with my popper, as I think I mentioned a few minutes ago, is the edge of that grass. You guys can see here, probably now by the lighting, that the grass grows from the bank, kind of like a snot, snot moss sort of grass, and then it grows about five, nah, five to 10 feet out, and then the bank starts to slope down into a deeper section. So it's pretty important that I get my popper as close to that edge as possible because the farther away from that edge I get, the farther away from shallow water I get, and those fish uh, are probably not, especially this time of the day, going to be in any kind of deeper water. And if they are, it's gonna be hard to get them out of deep water to come hit a top water. So usually the pattern in any lake or pond out there is you wanna be either on the grass or close to the edge. And especially in this situation, any kind of open water cast, like I just made half my cast there in open water. Not surprised, I did not catch a fish. But as I worked the popper here, finally closer to where I see that edge underwater, I see an edge out there, right where my popper is, that's where the fish are most likely going to be not just positioned at, but also positioned at a place that they can eat it. Again, an open water cast with the top water. If I make a big open bomb into the middle of the pond, it's probably not worth my time. You wanna have efficiency in your ponds, just like in lakes. I'm a big fan of efficiency. And so that, that cast there is not efficient. I'm gonna make a shorter cast closer to the edge right there. And hopefully this one results in a fish. Oh no, I lost him. Dang it. Again, they're not very big in here, not, definitely not aggressive. These bites are like tiny little slurps. Not really a big explosion. As you all saw from the drone shot, it is a beautiful looking pond. Uh, there are a few more ways that I could catch them. And so if your pond is a, is a pond like this one, this exact situation, you know, with the conditions today, reaction baits, not really the way to go. Top water popper, a little tiny popper like this is really the only way to go for these conditions. Um, thunder cricket, vibrating jig, swim jig, spinner bait, not really good because it is so calm. If you're gonna throw a moving bait, I would throw a, a swimming worm or maybe a, a, a swim bait, like a, like a flashy swimmer or a tiny little paddle tail swim bait. And then of course, like I said, I think these ponds are best attacked with finesse soft plastics like a drop shot and a wacky rig. Maybe even a Ned rig with the bottom seems a little bit too soft and grassy for a Ned rig. So we're gonna pack up and head to pond number 10. Pond number 10. Not honestly sure if I can even be here. I think this is a retirement center for old folks, but uh, I saw it on the map and it looked juicy. And yeah, it looks very similar to the pond that I was just fishing at. So now that the sun's a little bit higher, I'm not gonna go with the top water. I'm gonna go with the wacky rig. And I'm also not bringing the big camera with me because I don't feel like attracting unnecessary attention. So. We're just gonna rock the chest mount today. Conditions, of course, are the exact same. This pond is being fished 10 minutes later <laughs> than the one I was just at. I, I am throwing the six inch Ocho. Um, I don't know if that's a smart thing to do in Michigan. In Texas, I, I find that the even the one to two pound bass will still eat the six inch. I don't know if that's the case up here with these Michigan bass. So I may have to go back to the truck to get a different size Sanko, but uh, We'll see if we can get one on the six inch. I don't see why not. Oh, and I see a, I see a fish that just bust right there. And I got grass on my lure, dang it. It, it, it looked bassy. There's one, I knew it, I knew it. Oh yeah, let's go, let's go, let's go. Bring it in, baby. Bring it in, bring it in, bring it in. What a nice one. Ah, well, nice, but also skinny. Skinny as heck. Look at this guy, wow. Probably the same bass that I had just seen. Thank you, my friend. Oh, but he chewed my Ocho in half. So 
we got to go back to the truck to get another Ocho. I was scared and didn't want to be in my truck for too long because I felt like I might get kicked out. But it doesn't seem like anybody's here to kick me out. So we're going to go back to the truck, get the whole pack of Ochos, and I'll be right back. Well, that is cool, folks, that I was able to find this pond on the map, assume because it looks like the other one that they have fish, and assume that they bite the wacky rig. Now, that fish there was just probably in a feeding mood, so he would have eaten a, you know, a wacky rig hot dog, but it is good to feel some confidence towards a body of water. And again, I do see shoreline grass, but it's not, it, it doesn't stick out far enough, and I don't think it has enough water underneath it to be froggable. I'd love to throw a frog out here, I just don't think this pond is suited for that. See, and one thing I'm noticing is that this pond is definitely, I, of course, I'll, I'll find out on the drone shot when I get the drone up, but it's definitely not as deep, at least where I just cast, as uh, the other pond is. There's one. Gosh. <laughs> He's flopping around. Okay, buddy. Gee, he hit it literally as I was like reeling it in. That was surprising. All right, let's keep it going. Both bites that I've gotten have been on the edge of the grass, as always. Look look at the stinking grass edges. You'll find fish. I am going to make a few casts out into open water because it's possible that this grass here extends throughout basically the entirety of the underside of the pond. And if that's the case, you're going to have bass scattered all throughout the, uh, the middle of the pond as well. But that's more of a middle of the day sort of thing. I have the advantage of earliness with me right now. Because of that, these fish are most likely going to be mostly on the the edge. I know I keep talking about the edge. It's probably getting redundant. I'm going to stop talking about it. There's one. Oh, gosh, dang it. Ah. There he is. There he is. Yes. Yes. Bring him in. Bring him in. Bring him in. Slightly bigger. Yes. Let's go. These fish are active and moving, folks. This is fun. I like this. I am not ashamed to say that I like this pond series. But now that I see how active they are, I don't think the wacky rig is the best choice for that. Sure, I've caught two and got another bite or two on it, but I think there's a lure that we can put on that will get us quite a bit more success. And that is the old weightless caffeine shad. So let's do that real quick and be right back. Of course, as always, I'll have all the gear that I've used in the video thus far linked in the video description below. Please, uh, if you can, whether you're buying this stuff or different fishing gear, rods, reels, lures, enter the websites, whether it's Tackle Warehouse or Losing Strike King, through those links down there, and that helps me make affiliate income and helps this channel continue. So thank you guys for doing that. It means a lot. Well, hey, we got cabbage. Did not know we had cabbage in here. That's kind of cool because it's kind of the best pond. There we go. There's one. Got him. It's kind of the best pond color. Ugh, even though they're feeding on little minnows. And if I run out of watermelon, I will throw a shad color. But I have found for ponds, watermelon red is hard to beat. Ugh. Man, that guy got hooked good in the corner of the mouth. Thank you, little friend. There's one. Oh, gosh. Little guy. Little stinker. Come back here, little stinker. When you are fishing situation like this with a light soft plastic and no wind it's really crucial to be watching your line i would have seen that bite if i wasn't off daydreaming because when your line lays flat on the water and you've been doing this long enough you can tell if something has disturbed your line your line can jump your line can move sideways and uh a lot of the times that's all i can tell i have a bite bring it in there we go nice fish Nice little skinny Michigan bass. I saw my line jump, didn't even feel it. Just watched my line jump and I got him. Gosh, you're so skinny. Y'all have so much forage in here. I see bluegill, I see minnows. There's probably some bullfrogs in the shore knowing what's around here. Why are these fish so dang skinny? There we go. Got him. Got him, got him, got him. Seems about the same size. Wow, we got a jumper on our hands. And we got quite a lot of fish in this pond, which is awesome. The rod and the line that I'm throwing this caffeine shed on are definitely not the right one. I was planning on fishing a pond today 
I might get to it in 100 Ponds episode 4, but that had kind of more deeper deeper water, more rocks. So I brought my hard plastic jerk bait rod. And so this thing is not really meant to be set in the hook. So you might notice when I set the hook, the ball, the rod bends a lot. <laughs> That's because this rod is not really meant to be set. It is a jerk bait specific rod. So I'm able to make it work because I know exactly how much slack to take in before I set the hook really hard with this thing. But if it was my choice, I'd be throwing my seven foot medium or my seven two medium on this. The 10 pound line works fine still. Uh, 12 is probably a little bit better to be safe, but this is definitely not the right rod. So if you're, if you're looking at it, it says jerkbait special. Yeah, don't, don't get the jerkbait special rod for this technique. I have an entire instructional video or two on uh, the best ways to work the soft plastic jerkbait. And I talk about gear in that video. The 7.2 medium, I think is the best rod for this technique. Not this, uh, this six foot nine medium light. <laughs> no fish here yet. There he is. Got him, you little tail stealer. That one feels a little bit nicer. Is it nicer? Oh, he get off. He got off. Oh, there's one. Gosh, I was not expecting that. Come on, come through the slop. I know I got the wrong rod for you. I got the wrong rod. Oh boy. <laughs> Six nine medium light is not the smartest for pulling fish through sludge. It's gonna be fine. We're gonna get him in. You are not even that big compared to the amount of sludge that I have. Ugh, there we go. Gotcha. We're gonna get the hook out of your face. Perfect. Thank you, friend. Good grief. Man, these fish are stinking everywhere. I gotta pull him through a little faster. Come on. Dang it. <laughs> I got him in all kinds of gunk again. And bring it in. <sighs> Thank you, my friend. See ya. Oh, gee. I watched one. I watched one come out and eat it. That was cool. Come back for it, buddy. It's killing me not having the right rod for this. <laughs> Here we go. Twitch. Got him. That was so cool. That was so cool. Oh my goodness. Biggest one of the day? Biggest one of the day? I'm just horsing them in. Just horsing them in. No, well, not biggest one of the day. They're all identical cookie cutter fish. They need to do a little bit of fish management, but I don't think the nursing home really cares. Gracias. There he is. Ha ha ha. That was cool. I watched him. He missed it the first time. Threw right back there. Watched him fly out and eat it. Oh gosh. Chill. Chill, buddy. Oh, oh gosh. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Kevin. Almighty Kevin Van Dam for putting your name on this package. There he is. Yes. Hey, hey. Let's finish the video here, folks, with this absolutely skinny boy. Like, like I'm talking like paper thin. These fish have no reason to be this thin with the amount of forage I see in here, besides the fact that there's too many of them. So, yes, it makes for fun fishing experience catching a whole bunch of fish, but when the fish look like that, they're just not healthy. All right, we'll see you guys back at the truck for a little bit of a recap. So we are back at the truck after a successful 100 Ponds episode. I think we began this episode um, in Tennessee, maybe, and finished it in Michigan, which is crazy. The last two ponds that I fished were definitely similar. I would say you can make comparisons to the first pond, but it definitely wasn't a different stage of the summer. It was more early summer, and it was down in the south, not up here in the north, so the water clarity was different. The water the water temperature was different. The, we had crazy wind that day, if I'm thinking right. But I am enjoying this series. I hope that you guys are as well. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button if you are not already subscribed to the channel. 100 Ponds is going to go on for a while. We just finished uh, pond number 10. We are one tenth of the way there. We have definitely had some awesome moments at some great ponds, as well as some really tough moments at some pretty crummy ponds. But I'm excited for the rest of 100 ponds. We are one tenth of the way there. And we'll see you guys next time, right here on TRF for 100 ponds.